I kind of liked it better before the gloss. Hey everybody, it's Ted, the Buffalo Beauty Boy. Um, welcome to my channel. <laughs> um, this is going to be an empties video. Um, I, my cat is going nuts. Um, so I feel like for empties, I really want to keep them kind of unfiltered. I want to, you know, really tell you what I'm using, have a chat, um, you know, talk about stuff. Um, so I'm going to have a glass of wine. You can have a beverage or a, um, you know, glass of water, drink your water, drink your coffee, whatever. So yeah, come, you know, see, let's rummage through my trash. So my hair is huge today. Um, it's my natural texture. And then I just put some like waves in it with a curling iron just to kind of give it some shape, um, for the camera. Um, if you don't like it, do what my mother always said. Uh, if you have nothing nice to say, come home and tell it to me. <laughs> my mother never said that. That's a lie. Um, but yeah, so we're gonna just talk about some empties. I think we're really ready. So also I'm not wearing a pastel, uh, hoodie today. So I love that for me. <laughs> um, but I've got my bag of, uh, trash <laughs> and yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna talk about some empties. The lip gloss that I just put on is the uh, Maybelline Lifter Gloss in Crystal, if you were interested. So not too many like makeup empties, but I think I've got some skincare, I've got some hair care, and some bath. So I'll start out with something that's not necessarily an empty, but something that I thought was kind of worth mentioning. I bought two packages of reusable cotton rounds. So I've got 20 each they come like 10 in a pack and they're from mother earth me mother earth reusable hemp cotton rounds um i've been using them for most of the month i think i bought them on the third and i got them maybe on the like 10th or you know eighth um so yeah i'm a big fan liking that very sustainable in the new year we're trying right a for effort i will say they are a little bit of a pain in the butt to clean because I clean them by hand. I don't put them in the washing machine. I'm sure I could, but I just, I don't know. I decided to clean them by hand because I'm a masochist. So let's talk. Mm. We'll go, I got, we'll just get the big things out of the way. Um, I have this bubble bath from Dr. Teal's. It's the sleep melatonin with essential oil. I typically don't love lavender smells but this is very lavender heavy, but it smells like real lavender. It doesn't smell like fake aromatherapy, like body spray. I don't know if I'm the only one that like knows that vibe, but um, yeah, it smells like real lavender. So this is a fun one. As far as the melatonin goes, um, I'm actually really sensitive to melatonin. Like if I take a melatonin, I'm out. Like I have trouble waking up, um, but I don't notice anything topically. I don't know what the science is behind that, but I didn't notice anything different. Um, it's just a really nice bubble bath that I would use at nighttime. So the next bath product is probably my favorite. Um, the Dr. Teal's hemp seed oil bath salts. Um, it's Epsom salt, hemp seed, and the fragrance is white thyme and bergamot. <sighs> Y'all, this smells so high end. Like, this smells like it's from the Goop Lab. Like, this smells like it's from the Goop Lab. Or, I, for a $5 bath salt, you can't beat it. I've got, like, two going, and I've been through maybe four of these. Cheapest chips, I feel like I can douse my bath in it. Um, the Epsom salt really is nice and calming. Um, and the scent is just wonderful. My boyfriend even likes it. Um, and he's like pickier with scents than I am, which leads me to the next empties. My cat is going nuts. Hey, psst, psst. I hope she gets it together. Um, <laughs> so my next empties are the Way shampoo and conditioner for medium hair. Um, used both completely up. Um, 
I liked them. They felt very luxury, very high end. I love the packaging. Like Way and Olaplex um, and Act and Acre are probably like my favorite packaging for hair care. Um, I just love how sleek it is. So um, between my boyfriend and I, we used these up. We both really liked them. He loves the scent. Um, I don't want to say I don't love it. However, it is strong. I noticed that there's something in my hair. Um, and I only wash my hair twice a week. So for me, like, I need smells in my hair to be very soft. Because I wear fragrance every day, because I add dry shampoo and hair oil and whatnot. Um, so the fragrance was really nice, but it was absolutely noticeable. I finished them up. I am, however, going to hang on to the containers because on Way's website, you can purchase refills. And I'm not sure if the refill is like one whole or maybe like one and a half. I don't think it's two like bottles worth, but you can refill your bottles. So I'm going to hold on to these for a few months. And if I decide to repurchase, then I can refill these. And if not, I'll probably just declutter them. Um, but yeah, I love that mantra of being able to refill staples that you use. I think that's really cool. And I like that that's kind of where we're headed in the beauty industry. The next hair item is a conditioner and this is AG Boost Conditioner. I have the shampoo and it's almost done. I'm using it to clean, um, I used it to clean my, um, sponges and then, um, my cotton rounds. And then I actually use it to wash my hair extensions. So if you didn't know, yeah, I've got a couple pieces in. I wear extensions just for like beefiness to my hair. My hair is pretty normal, I would say. Um, so yeah, I guess my my dirty secret's out. <sighs> my dirty secret's out. <sighs> Whatever. Um, it's mine. I bought it. <laughs> So yeah, I'm using that for my extensions, um, but this was great. It's apple cider vinegar based. And I personally am really topically sensitive to apple cider vinegar. Like if I use an apple cider vinegar mask on my face or something like that, my skin gets really irritated with raw apple cider vinegar, which I've actually been drinking two tablespoons with a little bit of water every morning, kind of since the start of new year. But we were using this long before. Anyway, this is a whole lot about apple cider vinegar. Um, this was really nice. The shampoo is beautiful. The conditioner is beautiful. They smell very light, which as I mentioned, I like, um, my boyfriend thought they were okay. I thought they were spectacular. I have colored hair. He does not, um, you know, I guess use your own discretion, but AG is a really cool brand. Um, I believe they're Canadian and I don't hear anybody talk about them. And I was using them before I was a hairstylist, when I was just, you know, a kid, not a kid, but when I was in like high school and college, I wore my hair unicorn platinum lavender blonde. They have a purple shampoo called Sterling Silver that is exquisite. They have a bunch of styling products that are really beautiful. And then they have their like natural line, which those are from, and they're divine. So big fan of those. And, oh, I missed like a body one. So, all right, we'll see. But it's the, sorry about that. My camera cut out. So this is the White Barn Rose Water and Ivy. It smells wonderful. Very clean rose if you like a rosy scent. Um, I like it in my bathroom, hand soap, you know, room spray, bath products, um, but not like on me personally like I won't wear a rose fragrance but I'll use a hand soap so we used that up and we loved it ah, I've got empties everywhere <laughs> I've got um I think two makeup and then four skincare products so the next one is the Versed Skin Soak and I used this up. It was a wonderful cream. Um, I like a thick, heavy cream at nighttime, but this was great even during the day. So for, I think, 17 bucks, you really can't beat it. Um, I thought it was really nice. One that I didn't love that I definitely won't be repurchasing 
is the Ordinary Peeling Solution. It's the like red, like it looks like dragon's blood. Um, not that it's not a wonderful product. However, people tend to really overuse it when they do. I think it says to use weekly. It says to not use more than twice per week. I used this twice a month. Um, I'm in my uh, late mid 20s um, and actively fighting early signs of aging. So I've been using um, acids on my skin for probably like seven years now. Um, and I think toners are a great option. Maybe a clay mask with a little bit of glycolic acid. I personally use one. This just seemed really harsh. And because it's so affordable, I think people see it and it's this miracle product. So they want to use a ton of it. And I almost think it should be like, there's a reason that Drunk Elephant Baby Facial is $80. There's a reason that, um, you know, Biologique Recherche is so expensive because these acids are really intense. While I think what The Ordinary does is beautiful, I think putting this much, it's a 30% AHA and 2% BHA. So you have 32% acid. That's probably not like, chem like chemically right. Um... But basically, there's a ton of acid in here, and you put it on your skin, and it, you know, exfoliates, which is wonderful and great for acne, great for aging, great for radiance, great for all of that. But because this is $8, you know, there's nothing stopping my 16-year-old cousin from using it and slathering it on her face three times a week and really wrecking her skin, which I have heard has happened. So I think... It's a wonderful product. I just wish it came with different instructions for use. Um, and then another product that I used up but am not super in love with is the Summer Fridays Jet Lag Mask. And this is iconic. Um, I bought the mini because it's A, very expensive, and B, like reading about it and seeing what it does, it doesn't really seem like something that I would love. So you're like, Ted, where did you buy that? Um, I bought it on a whim at Sephora. It must have been like the Sephora sale. Um, and I used it and was not wowed. I really like one from Caudalie. I have the one from Glossier. Like I do enjoy a hydrating mask, but to me it's too expensive and not highly performing enough to warrant the price. Does that make sense? Um, where something like the Glossier one is very affordable and does, in my opinion, essentially the same thing. And in all honesty, so does adding a couple drops of oil to your night cream. <laughs> um, that's really how I feel. So this one, because it's so pricey, I kind of saved it for special occasions and um, like events and stuff. Not that I've had, you know, any of that going on in the last year, but just not something that I really like can in good conscience super like recommend because I think there's other stuff out there that's more affordable. The last one that's a proper empty is my MAC strobe cream. Um, this was in my like use up makeup bag. Love it. Um, I've got other radiance glowy products, so I'm not going to be repurchasing. It's a staple. It's a great product, but with the products that I have, I can create something similar so I love her. I'm sending her off on a, you know, hopefully wonderful second life. <laughs> um, but I use it up um, over it, you know. And the last two are products that I'm decluttering. So I've got the NYX Soft Matte Lip Cream in Athens. Um, this is really old. It's probably one of the first products I ever bought. And it's just so dry. Um, and not my color, not what I love. I'm just not here for it. Um, so we're saying goodbye to that. And then the other one is a little sample. It's about like half used, like you can kind of see. But this is Clinique Splash Lip Gloss in Caramel Pop. And this is like glossy concealer lip on me. I actually wore this for Halloween, I dressed up as like paparazzi Britney Spears, like with the pink wig. And I did like a like black and gray smoky eye and a nude glossy lip. And this is what I used. And 
I could not get behind it. It was funny for the costume, but not something that I need in my actual collection. So, oh, one more. Um, I've got a little teeny bit left, left, but it's essentially an empty. This is the Glossy Milky Jelly Cleanser. You can see it's really, I've made a dent. I've been through probably 10 of these. This is my favorite morning cleanser. It's great. It's fairly affordable. The only problem is I wish, like I want Glossier to sell at Ulta or Target or Sephora or something. And I know that's like not their ethos. That's not their brand. But I hate placing an order for a cleanser. Like I'm not going to pay shipping. So then I feel compelled to like buy other stuff, which like I can always use a boy brow, but really I can only use so many boy brows within the time it takes me to use a cleanser. So this is great, but I am going to be trying the Versed Gentle Cycle. In my head, they're going to be really similar. I have no proof of that. I haven't even watched like anybody review the Gentle Cycle Cleanser, but I am really excited to play with Versed and like reading about them, they sound very similar. So hopefully, but... Yeah, let me know if you've tried that and it's similar to this. So yeah, those are my empties. Um, one thing that I wanted to incorporate in my channel is books. Um, I follow a lot of booktubers and I'm, I've mentioned a couple times, I'm a big reader. So if you are here for Strictly Beauty, then I guess like toodles. <laughs> I'll see you in the next one. Cheers, babe. <laughs> um, but if you care what I read this month, then stick around. I'm on Goodreads. Um, I think it's just Ted McKnight. Um, I can try to link it in my bio if you want to come hang out with me on Goodreads. But I am doing a book challenge. I'm trying to read 40 books this year. That's just for me personally. Um, and I also do include audiobooks in that. So this month I listened to two audiobooks. I listened to We Are Okay by Nina LaCour. And she's a YA author. She's incredible. And it was a wonderful story of a girl kind of dealing with loss and, you know, growing. And then I listened to My Not So Perfect Life by Sophie Kinsella. And it was okay. Um, it's Brit. Sophie Kinsella, I believe, is British. Um, and it was very good. It was fun. It was cheeky. Um, it had that like British humor that I love. Um, but very gossipy, very easy, like beach read kind of. And it was about a girl who works for an advertising firm in London and has this like horrific boss. And she winds up back in, you know, the countryside on her dad's farm and madness ensues and people that she worked with go there and it's it's very silly but very fun. So those are my two audiobooks that I listened to this month. And then I read one, two, three, four, five, six books this month. So the first book that I read was Haruki Murakami's After Dark. <sighs> This book, I've never read any Murakami. And Murakami has been on my list for a really long time. Murakami is just somebody that I've never gotten the chance to read. I've always been slightly intimidated by like 1Q84. It's like this thick. Um, and I wanted to, you know, delve in. So I kind of looked up like, what do people recommend? And nobody really had a ton of answers. They said Kafka on the shore, which is fine. Um, I haven't read it, but I will. <laughs> um, and I was, you know, at Barnes & Noble, which I worked at Barnes & Noble for like four or five years. Um, so I went and I was, you know, chatting with the manager and, you know, kind of just looking at Mirakami books. And I went to grab, I think it was Men and Women. Don't quote me on that. But I miss grabbed and I grabbed this one. And I read the back and I fell in love. And it's basically um, a girl who's 19 is sitting in a Denny's in Tokyo and it takes, it starts at like 1150 at night and then it goes until like seven in the morning and it takes place over the entire span of an evening in Tokyo. 
And it was just wonderful. Um, whimsical, a sense of kind of surrealism, but very beautiful. A phenomenal, phenomenal, phenomenal read. The next one that I read was a teen favorite of many. I never read it, but I read Will Grayson, Will Grayson by John Green and David Leviathan. I read a ton of John Green growing up. Um, I never read this one specifically. And then recently I read Turtles All the Way Down and I was not impressed. So I love David Leviathan. He is, I believe, a queer author. Um, and I like these kind of tag team books where it's like two authors writing. So I picked this up. It was kind of winking at me from my shelf and I've had it for, God, probably 10 years now. So I read it and it's wonderful. I, I'm i still friends with a lot of people that I was friends with in high school. My core group of friends, I was all friends with. And I texted them and was like, y'all did not tell me that Will Grayson, Will Grayson is so good <laughs> when we were in high school. Um, one of the characters, his name is Tiny, and he is a like junior in high school and he's a very large, like he's on the football team. He's just like a big dude. I was never on the football team, but... As somebody who has always been very, like, a feminine, like, sounding and, you know, very, I, you know, am a large man who's queer. I think had I read this when I was like 16, 17, I would have gotten so much out of it. And he's not even a main character. He's one of the main character's best friends, but it was incredible. Um, Definitely dated. Like, I think of the culture of queer stories now and I think of what it was when I was in high school and it's changed dramatically for the better so there's a couple I think there's like some use of some slurs um but all in all I think it's a really wonderful book so if you're looking for an easy teen read maybe give this a go next one that I read was um Transcendent Kingdom by Ya Yasi. And I don't know how to, I don't know how to accurately depict this book because it was wonderful. I think it was a very important read. I think that she is doing wonderful things for literature. However, <laughs> um, I, there's a lot of like religious tones to the book. Um, the book has a lot of religious undertones, which I mean, clearly from the book or from the cover, but um, there's a lot of like religion and philosophy and like personal self that I thought was important. Um, it was a really great book, but I felt like it was just a little wordy in some places. And I love a wordy book, but it felt like there was like, I guess like an over depiction of things that I didn't feel needed to be described. That being said, very important book to read. Um, I think in 2021, there is no reason that we need to read James Patterson. <laughs> um, I just think we need to really work on reading authors of color, women, um, you know, stories that aren't told by straight white men. So, um, um, Transcendent Kingdom. Read the, read the synopsis. Do your own research. Um, but very good. Um, an important read, I'll say. The next book that I read was We Are, We Were Liars by E. Lockhart. Um, this is an advanced reader copy I got when I worked at Barnes & Noble a million years ago. Um, another easy teen read. Um, very good, very emotional, dramatic, um, you know, definitely, definitely a worthy one if you like that, you know, kind of, I guess, format. If you like a teen read, it was a good one. Um, the next one that I read was Their Eyes Were Watching God by Zora Neale Hurston. This was so beautiful. Um, her writing is impeccable. Um, something about the way that she captured the characters and their like intricacies and their 
relationships were incredible. Um, it really focuses on a woman named Janie and her life um, in relationships. And I think a lot of it is the way that like specifically men perceive her. And um, she really gives, you know, voice to black women, but also it was written over 75 years ago. So in a world where we have, you know, these really prolific black women authors writing, she's touted as one of the greats um, for a reason. This was impeccable. I'm very happy that I read it. Again, another one that was kind of winking at me from the shelf. I think like a third of it is like digestion of the book and people talking about what it, how prolific it was. So an absolutely beautiful, phenomenal read. I can't speak highly enough of this book. And then the last one was Gillian Flynn's Sharp Objects. Um, so I was under the impression that her name is Gillian, but it was pronounced Gillian from what I saw. Um, this book was heavy and twisted and... Um, definitely one that kept me up, one that I couldn't stop thinking about. Um, yeah, they're like very, it's called Sharp Objects. Do what you want with that. Um, but very good. Um, putting myself through, um, her book, Dark Places. And I've heard that's even more like hard than this one. Um, but she famously wrote Gone Girl and I love a modern like mystery psychological thriller. Um, I tend to like, um, Ingrid Nelson, pour one out, pour one out for Ingrid Nelson's YouTube channel, y'all. Um, she was talking about books and she called them suburban mysteries and that, took off for me. Um, so like, I love Big Little Lies. I love Girl on the Train. I love Little Fires Everywhere. Like those kind of like whirlwind, mystery, salacious kind of gossipy books. Um, and yeah, I really get into those, but I don't do a lot of like gory, um, like anything too, like, harsh I guess um and Gillian Flynn absolutely goes there but again it was a phenomenal book so that was a little peek into my bookshelf thus far and one challenge that I've set for myself is to decolonize my bookshelf um I'm actively trying to read women authors of color um stories about different cultures and different you know ways of thinking because I think it's very easy to fall into the trap of, you know, I'm a cisgendered, you know, white queer man and I very much can actively consume content that's only, you know, only relates to me and that's not what it's about. Um, so I'm really actively trying to diversify my bookshelf. Um, I think you've got a pretty good charcuterie board tasting of my um, reading style. <laughs> yeah, if you have any recommendations of books, um, please let me know in the comments. Uh, feel free to give this video a thumbs up. And uh, if you liked peeking through my garbage and listening to the books that I've read, uh, I would love to have you subscribe. Um, I, you know, really, I can't thank you guys enough for you know, dedicating a little time to me, but I hope you're all staying safe, uh, taking good care of yourselves. And most importantly, I hope that you're showing yourselves the same love that you show everybody else. So uh, thank you so much. Take care, everybody.